we are gonna go back to December of 2023 just for a little bit to talk about one of the projects that I made. I did a bunch of different things and I did last night gifts as well. So I'm sure I'll find some of the tags in here for that yarn. But if I don't have that, we're just gonna talk about the yarn. This project, however, I remembered. It was amazing, I finished it. I loved this entire project. This was the Fangirl Fibers 13 Nights of Merry Creepmas. Every single night there was a hank of yarn to work up and it was like the cute little baby hanks and I ended up making a wrap. But it's December, there was a lot of things that were happening. I actually wore it quite a bit at the end of December and then in January I blocked it, forgot about it, and now here at the beginning of March, I'm finally remembering that, hey, we haven't chatted about that, so let's do that. All of the rest of this is January, February, all of the yarn that I use, the good and the bad, it's all here in the Sam Trick or Treat head, but let's start with this first one. So, Fangirl Fibers, this was, like I said, it was the 13 night countdown, and I made this tiny, well not tiny, it's a big wrap. The colors are amazing. I just loved it so much and the fact that it was fingering weight yarn, it just drapes beautifully. It went with all of my outfits for December. Yes, there are a lot of ends. I know, I didn't weave them in. It's okay, it just became a part of it. Since it's kind of one of those wraps that you can mess around with, I just hid them really well and no one even knew about it. Yes, I will eventually weave those in. Today is not the day. Let's just admire how beautiful it is. It's actually really warm in here, so this is the only moment that I'm gonna have it on, but it is the Superwash Morena Wool. It's hand dyed, beautiful, gorgeous. Very, very happy that I got into this one. It was something that was nice to do on the road too because during December I was traveling, not even like long distance, but just traveling a lot. I was really lucky and I got to see a lot of my family members during December. I was very happy because every single night I knew that I was gonna have one of these to wind down with. And there was a little mythology as well because each paper bag had a character in here. Oh, there we go. And then we learned about it, which led me down a rabbit hole of doing a little more research about all this stuff. This is my favorite pattern to do for the Fangirl Fibers countdowns, especially because I don't know, like it's a mystery. Every single day I didn't know the color that was going to be showing up, even though I knew the palette was all going to go together since it was one theme for the box. And I worked this one up for the October Hocus Pocus box as well, and it worked up perfectly. So I'm gonna continue to do this. It is just a variation of a pattern that I already have out. It's my bookish wrap, which I used a chunky yarn for that. This goes down all the way to a fingering weight, and I used a 4.5. A four or even a 3.5 would honestly work just as well, but I wanted it to have a little stretch to it and not be so compact. So yeah, that is December. Getting it going here. Let me grab some of my marshmallow latte. January and February, all of the tags that I used are in here. January, I had a lot of projects that I finished, and February, I had a lot of yarn that I went through, and this kind of, you know, states everything here. So it's all combined together. We're just considering it one lump. I would love to have done every single month on their own, but I didn't do that at the end of January. So here we are, we're just powering through this. First up, we have the Bernate Felted. This is a February go-to for me. It's a super bulky number six yarn. Something that came out, I wanna say, in August of 2023. And at that time, I just wasn't ready to make a blanket. So I kept passing it up. I think I have many of these in here. This is a Tunisian crochet blanket that I am still working on. This was my, I don't know what I want to make in February. So I'm just gonna keep on working up this blanket type of blanket. Anytime I come across this Bernate felted, just know it's going towards this giant blanket that I haven't decided if, I want to be finished with it or not. I think in total, right now I have six skeins of these 
And I have the color Metal Coal and Ivy Fleck. So it was a green speckly type of color, very moss, 249 yards. And I have six of them together at the moment. There is a little bit of wool. Obviously, once it's done, or I think that it's going to be finished, I will definitely show that off. At the moment, though, it's sitting by my bed because it's just something I'm not ready to commit to being done with it yet. So at the end of the night, I've just been working up a little bit here and there. It is machine wash and dryable. So this is a yes for me. The only thing about the Yarnspirations, you and I already know this, they put this type of yarn out and sometimes it's limited edition, other times it's seasonal. I'm not sure if this is going to stay out or how long it's going to be out. The blanket that's on this pattern, which is free pattern actually on the label, is super cute. I will definitely be making this sometime. I don't know when. I'm thinking maybe like a springtime blanket. I know that it's felted and it's wool and this is actually a moss stitch, so it's gonna be really compacted, but just a nice throw to have that I can take outside and I'm not gonna be worried about it. I haven't thrown it in the dryer yet. I did a little swatch. It was just a 12 by 12 inch square, threw that in the wash. Came out really nice. I wanted to make sure though that the wash was actually a thing before I made this huge giant blanket and committed to it because I don't want to hand wash my blankets. But anyways, it turned out just fine. 62% acrylic, 21% wool, which is quite a bit, and 17% nylon. To say that I've been obsessed with it is probably an understatement because I've just really been enjoying working it up. If I constantly keep going back to it, even if I'm only making a blanket and I don't really have any direction for that pattern, this is a yes for me. If it was something that I knew they were going to keep around and not make it a limited time only, I would stock up on different colors. But right now I only have the colors, these three colors here. But like the Ivy Fleck, I would get so much more of this and make some pillow covers. Maybe do like a springtime witchy theme for my living room. We'll see how long it's out there. I know it's in stores right this second. I found this at Michael's and they have quite a bit, but it is on the end cap. It's not in the actual shelves, which makes me think that this is gonna be a seasonal thing, but I'll keep my eye out for it. Bernate Blanket Big, just to continue with this. The Gray Splash. No, this was not actually a blanket. This is a rug of which I am sitting on right now. So I will move since I have it. Let's show it off. Very basic. I just did a circle and kept going from there. I added on every single row. I just wanted something soft and cozy to sit on. I've made other rugs with it. I've made blankets with it. And it's been around for a while. So I have the, I don't have any extra here right now. Honestly, I think this was the last one that I had, but there, this one is called Gray Splash. There's also a Red Splash, which I made a huge rug for. And that's my cozy little reading area that I have at this moment. It's machine wash and dryable as well. 100% polyester. There is a label or there is an actual pattern that it came with, but it's knit. If you like to knit though, it looks super cozy. And dryable, it does say that on the inside. Yeah, I've thrown this rug in the wash and the dryer constantly. I'm not really being careful with it at all. I mean, it's a rug that I chill on. My cats curl up on it all day. So, you know, there's little kitty hairs and stuff in it. The wash and dryer friendly was a must for if I was going to make it into a rug. Love this stuff. Again, Yarnspirations. I would love it if they kept it. However, I have seen it on the inside of the aisles at Michael's. So who knows? Maybe it's going to be around for a little bit. How many did I actually use for this rug? I want to say four. One, two, three. Oh, maybe I only used three. So unless I find another one. Just three for the rugs. I didn't write it down. I didn't anything. I just one day was like, I need to have another rug. And I have some of this yarn here. Let's go ahead and work it up. So I did a circle, single crochet, and just build on the row until all three of the balls of yarn were gone. And that was it. Honey Bunny Big from Hobie. This is something from December that I used quite a bit. I ended up, it's 100% polyester. So I used it for a bunch of stockings if I was gifting any sort of anything really that couldn't fit in a bag or I didn't want to put in a bag, I would quick make a stocking for it with this yarn. It suggests using a 12 millimeter 
crochet hook. I didn't do that. I used my Tunisian crochet hook and worked up the stockings. So I ended up using that I use. I think I used a 15. Yeah, 15 millimeters. That's what I used for it. You can throw it in the wash. It says don't put it in the dryer, which I would say, yeah, don't even try it. It's so soft and fluffy, but it has that chiffon type of style to it where on the ends, wherever you cut, there's a lot of the fuzzy stuff that comes out. So I always had to, when I tied them together, I would have to kind of weave that end in basically immediately to figure out how much of that stuff was gonna be everywhere before it became a total mess. I mean, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't have made as many stockings as I ended up doing. I just got this in black and white. They basically had a bunch of different colors. They're all solid colors though. Black and white is classic. I figured if I had any left for myself, I was gonna end up making a rug. I never ended up doing that because I used it all. I had to readjust here a little bit there. We can see the Sam, we're all good. Felt like I was gonna tip my coffee over. Fangirl Fibers, jumping ahead to February. So Emily of Fangirl Fibers came to one of my local yarn shops that was basically in my backyard. So I got the awesome opportunity to meet her in person, have a little chit chat for hours, like I was there for so long. It was one of those things where you meet someone who you've been chatting with online for a while and once you meet in person, you're like immediate friends. We're like, we are besties. We're gonna talk about everything and anything and it was just, it was such a fun Saturday morning. It was also amazing because not only was she there, but she brought a bunch of the yarn that she had from Extras of Kits, subscription yarn, anything that was extra she had it there. There was even some stuff that had never been on her site before and we got to see that, which I do have one of those, but this is the Haunted Mansion Doodle. It was from October of 2023. She did so many things in October and this year, I'm writing it on my calendar, in my planner, underline, highlight, circle, so I don't forget, but I, I want to get my hands on anything and everything that comes out of Fangirl Fibers this year because look at this yarn. Like I almost miss this and it makes me so sad that I didn't have this for Halloween. It is a little bit of a silver lining though because I had so many things going on in October that after Saturday, so this was Saturday at about mm, maybe one-ish. I made it all the way back home caked everything up by 9 p.m. this was done. You know what I mean? It was probably a good thing that I waited to work this up and then I decided, so this just has like a little pico on the edging. This is the exact same thing that I made with the 13 night countdown. Only difference is this is fingering weight yarn and this is DK weight yarn. So it just works up a little bit quicker. I wanted to make a little brooch to attach everything all together, but to go with the theme of the yarn that it came with. So that since this was the Haunted Mansion, I worked up a cute little ghosty here, put little buttons on it. I'm gonna have to put the brooch, I don't know, strategically underneath here because the eyes are a little bit big. So I'm gonna do some more searching for smaller eyes and everything, but essentially it's just gonna go on there. It's gonna be so freaking cute. I love it so much. The slime green though, you know, the slime green with the intensity of this black yarn, it's so gorgeous. This one is for me. I made this with me in mind. <laughs> a lot of times when I get stuff from Fangirl Fibers, I'm like, oh, this would be perfect for this person or oh, like these colors would be amazing. So like this color combination, I know that my mother would love this color combo, but then I ended up making it for myself. And so like this is the second project of the Fangirl Fibers kits that it's for me. We gotta have one of those projects every once in a while. This was Superwash Marina Wool DK Weight Yarn, 246 yards. They were a bundle of mini hanks. So every single color came as like a mini hank and I just worked it up until it was gone. It ended up working out pretty well. It looks like I did it on purpose. Like every row looks almost even, but it's not. Like there's a couple spots where, I don't know, I have to look really hard. Oh, okay, so like right here at the end, I didn't have quite enough to finish off this row in blue, so I just switched over to black. Like that's what I did. I would go all the way till maybe like a half of an inch left 
I needed that in order to tie it off, but I really did use everything that I had possible in this kit because it's just so beautiful. Is this the next one that I have then too? That one is no, what is it called? It's gotta be red right in top here. Okay, no, I have no idea. I have another kit. Maybe not, but anyways, I have it right here because I had everything ready to go. This is my travel yarn bag at the moment for small projects. I have totes for much bigger projects, but this had this one in it. Then when it was done, I switched over to this, which was the Dark Academia. So this is the set that did not even make it onto her site. And I saw it in person and was like, hold up. What the actual heck is this? Because... I need this. Like these are my colors. I freaking love this so much. It's a DK weight yarn. There are a couple. No, I only have one left. Just one more gray. Ooh, that is a mess that I need to add on to the end here. So I'm going to do one more row of this like newspapery type of color. It has a little hint of gray to it. It might be hard to see it on camera, but in person, it's a light cream with a little bit of gray in it. So that is the main color that's been going all throughout it. And then we have this dark crimson red. We have some more like a Merlot down here. Then I'm gonna do it the exact same as the Haunted Mansion one too. I'm just gonna do a little Pico on the edging. I don't know what I'm gonna make for the brooch for clasping it all together. I was thinking maybe a tiny little book, maybe a quill pen. I don't know. These are all ideas. Oh, and the ghost that I made, I used the glow in the dark yarn. And I think I'm gonna do that for this one too. Just cause it's a cotton yarn. So it, it holds up a little bit better and I'm a sucker for all things glow in the dark. So we're gonna keep going with this one. I don't know though what I'm gonna do. I just, I need to think about that one a little bit. And I think that's why it's not officially finished yet. Shadow Daddy, another fangirl fibers. This was one for the Valentine's Day box. I ended up making, whoa, a pair of socks with these. Wore them immediately. So this was my first pair of socks that I officially made on my knitting machine. There are a lot of mistakes on here, but they were wearable because I wore them around and like you can tell, this just came, like I just hand washed these. They're getting a little bit fuzzy because every time they are clean, I wear them. <laughs> I'm just so proud of myself for actually making and figuring out my knitting machine that these socks, were, I'm going to wear them out. Like that's what's going to happen. But they need to be blocked again with my little sock locks that I have from Fangirl Fibers as well. That's another reason to get into the Fangirl Fibers newsletter. Every once in a while, there are some sock block goodies. So if you like making socks, or you're like me and you're just obsessed now and you're gonna make so many of them that maybe you need multiple sizes. There's a Hocus Pocus one. There was just the classic bats, Barbie one. Like there was a bunch of different stuff and it's all throughout the year. It's just like sprinkled. Every new once in a while, you get the little gem dropped in the newsletter. I'm like, ooh, not even just the aesthetic of everything all together, but I mean, it's essential now since I'm using well, this is the, so yeah, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. So it is essential to block them after I wash them. Otherwise, they'll just be super, super stretched out or like the wrong size, like fit really weirdly. And I'm very particular when it comes to my socks and wearing them and how they fit and everything. So yeah, a sock blocker is a must for me. Winchester Mystery House, another fango fiber from February. No, this is January. The Haunted or Haunt Across America subscription that is uh, happening on Fangirl Fibers. This is the one that took place of the spooky year long. Fingering weight yarn again. So the entire year long, I'm going to be getting this in this exact size because I'm going to be making socks. Here is the pair of socks for that. This one I wore only once actually. I think I made them a little too small in length. I'm still gonna wear it, like don't worry, they're gonna get a lot of use out of it. Just experimenting with the knitting machine, we're figuring things out and that's why I got into this year long sock subscription, spooky socks, all year long. It's gonna keep me excited to work on my knitting machine at least every single month 
for, you know, one pair of socks. I mean, I'm working on it all the time. It's like every day, basically. And there may be like one or two days that I don't work on it. Once I get going, like when I get a new one of these for like when February comes in, then it's all week, you know, I'm gonna have an entire day, basically 24 hours sitting down and working this up. I want to see if I can play around with the river next to create some fun designs for the actual leg part here and the cuff. Even though this is amazing, like this is definitely gonna be my go-to pattern for a sock just because I have it down and I can finish an entire pair of socks under two hours. Yes, I said that correctly, <laughs> under two hours. Knitted pair of socks, which is just wild to me. I'm gonna keep using that one. Ooh, all the way back in December, apparently I have one more thing that I need to talk about. This is the Fangirl Fibers in Amityville, a colorway that I didn't really talk about because I didn't have it finished and it's still, well, I need to weave in the ends and I need to decide what I want to do, but I think I might be starting this one over. So this is the same pattern. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh, it makes me miss autumn so much with this. It is a fingering weight yarn. When I got it, I had every intention of working it up on my sock machine, but I got it at the beginning of December. Didn't get my sock machine until January. I was just impatient and I didn't want it to stay in a hank form, caked it up and started working this up, which I mean, I kind of like it. You know, like there's nothing wrong with it. I like this pattern, obviously. And just this part needs to get woven in. Yeah, there's a trend going on here with all of my patterns. I specifically got this for my nanny machine to make a pair of socks. And I just think it would look killer as socks. So I don't know. I'm going back and forth on that. Leave it alone. Pull it apart. Like, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know. If I left it alone, I could then have something amazing to wear for pumpkin picking in September, even though this might be a little warm for pumpkin picking. I can have it for the haunted houses that I go to. And in fairness, okay, you know what? I think I'm just gonna leave it be. We're, we're not gonna pull it apart because I'm gonna have 12 pairs of socks throughout the year. Plus I already have the Muse 2320 subscription as well. So it's another 12 pairs of socks on top of that. Yes, okay, you know what? We've decided, we're gonna leave it alone. I don't have enough to do a little Pico for the edging, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. Maybe I'll pull from something else here. I don't know, what do we think? Maybe do like that on the border, or just do a plain black, I don't know. But either way, okay, setting this in the pile of Finish me up. Red Heart Super Saver in the Jewel Tone. Ah, yes, our mood snood that we made at the beginning of January. I do have that right here. Here we go. The mood snood. It was so much fun. This was a 13 night countdown, so it went really, really quickly. And I like that, you know, we gotta switch it up a little bit every once in a while. Super Saver Stripes, there's five ounces here. It's Red Heart yarn. If you know this yarn, you know exactly what it is. One of those type of yarn that it's gonna get softer as time goes on. Although I do think this is not the worst. Like it's not the softest, but it's also not the scratchiest. I feel like they've been upping their game here changing things around a little bit. Big fan of this. I have a lot of them still this specific color, the jewel tone, just because it looks very Sally skeleton. And I know that I'm gonna have other projects that I wanna work it up with. I don't want it to come to October and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have this great idea. I just wish I had some more of this jewel tone and then it's sold out because there were a couple of Michaels that I went to that they were completely sold out. We're all loving it and I totally understand. A lot of Muse 2320 in January and February. We have the Cedar Swamp, Nevermore, and Sci Fiber Sock Set. Let's chat about these two first though because these were part of the many, many casualties that I had of projects that I started in February and ripped them apart many, many times. So we have the Nevermore which is, they're both 85% superwash merino wool. 
I had every intention of putting them together. The cedar swamp was like a dark, intense green, like swampy green. Putting that together with the crimson red and was gonna make a sweater. I got going on it, it was like a fishnet sweater. It looked really nice, but I don't know. My brain just did not like it. I didn't like how things were laying. So I ripped it apart a couple of times, completely frogged it, started over. I wanna say I started over about three different times and it has nothing to do with the yarn, it was just me i wasn't feeling it so it is all caked up right now but i like this yarn obviously it's going to be a project someday it just didn't happen during february the sci fiber set pulp fiction however success this was the january subscription so the beginning to it and this was an epic beginning pulp science fiction and here we go i played around with different color combos or like having two different colors and switching off on my sock machine which is the whole goal i'm trying to learn new things on my sock machine i'm not sure if i'm a huge fan of the color change just because of how it sits on my foot i can kind of feel and i mean it's really tiny of like where it actually switches off there's a tiny little knot and i did my best to hide it and everything but right on my toe i don't know i just i didn't enjoy that so i'm gonna have to keep playing around with this pattern but the color it's amazing i've actually wore these twice and i did i was good after this second time of washing it I blocked them which is why they look so crispy still the granny square all-in-one by red hearts everyone was talking about this now that I've officially had this and been playing around with it for a couple of months I still stand where I left off I think it's gonna be helpful in certain situations like traveling it makes it a lot easier because I have traveled with it I actually have a pattern here to show you or like a project that I made just from traveling but if you like the tension that you have if you like using the hook that you want to use for it you already know how to make granny squares it might not be your best friend type of deal i still am having fun with it though and not just with granny squares so i wanted to see after i figured out how to use it with a granny square which for me my tension had to be a lot tighter with this like a lot lot tighter I tried to go down a size with my hook I didn't really like that it kind of got caught and it did have like a squeaky noise which is an absolute no for me I would never reach for it if that is the end game like I know working with it that's what's gonna happen yeah I'm not gonna do that so I stuck with the 5.5 they do have the pattern of the granny square inside here made quite a few of them I just had to adjust my tension for the square and it it didn't throw me off just because I know what to expect now like when I first started yes it threw me off it was a little frustrating it was more time consuming than just making a granny square my way or like the way that I had been doing it if you could get past that it is fun and like I said for traveling it was really a game changer because you don't have to carry all of these balls of yarn you just carry the one skein and that's it you have a bunch of granny squares that you can make i did mess around with different patterns so i made the moon snood with i think this was three skeins of the red heart and i love how this turned out since i had done a sally version i figured i should do a jack version it just made this really cool design with it I didn't have to change yarn it did it all on its own and I don't know I love it and so the jewel tone was red heart I really didn't need to change anything from the pattern so I just did same hook size same everything and now I have two nightmare before Christmas inspired snoods and I didn't stop it at a certain spot like you can see how the design is going and where each skein starts and stops so if you wanted to make it very fluid and the design just like keep going you could just see where it stops pull that little bit of yarn out until you get to the next colorway and then keep going but I just wanted to make it as low-key of a project as possible so I just stopped wherever the yarn stopped added another skein however that was or whatever color was up that's how I went with it. Another thing that I did make, not entirely finished, but I do want to show it off because it's gorgeous, is a hexagon cardigan. I need to finish the sleeves and also the inside, like the little ribbing. 
I might do pockets. I'm not entirely sure, but it is a thick cardigan. Like this yarn is very, very warm. So I don't see myself wearing this in the near future, which just is kind of unfortunate. The goal is I am gonna finish this part up with just some red heart in the color, what is it just, it's just called black. So I'm gonna use this and do, did I do a half double crochet? I think that's what this is. The whole thing is a half double crochet and then I'm gonna just add a little ribbing to it, finish it off with here and then on the inside too. I don't think I'm gonna do ribbing. I honestly think I'm just gonna do one row of half double crochet around it. Pockets, maybe. Maybe I'll do like a little, or spider applique. Yeah, I like that direction instead of pockets. But I'm just, I wanted to wear this so bad and I tried to get it done. I worked on it a ton when we had our last blizzard and it was just like cold and I was feeling it. Just, uh, it's gonna have to wait a little bit to be worn, but that's okay, it'll be ready again. Arcane Faber works in Haunting. This was our yarn of the month for January and I made the bookish wrap, which is in my little reading quarter right now, but I ended up making a pair of mittens too. DK weight yarn is what I used for this. I also used a bulky weight yarn. Arcane Fiberworks is just amazing. Like hand dyed yarn company that comes out with colorways constantly. And the only way to keep up with it is the newsletter. So I get so many newsletters, honestly. Mondays, Fridays and Wednesdays. Uh, my like email, I know I'm gonna get a ton of, hey, we have some new colorways from all these different types of yarn artists out there. Needless to say, those are my favorite days of the week. Just a very quick and easy uh, single crochet and then did in the back loop only all the way across. It made some really pretty designs with it. When it's wet and snowy out, I cycle through these all the time because I cannot stand wet mittens i just i won't put them on so if they're wet or drying or yeah no i need to have a lot of the pair of mittens laying around at least one pair for every single day i have many more that i've made at least one pair dried and ready to go big twist cuddle yarn in the color blue this is a blanket that I'm working on, another endless blanket. I thought it looked very Coraline-esque, so I grabbed, I think, nine of these. It says eight for a blanket, but since I'm doing the Tunisian crochet version, I just wanted to be safe, so I grabbed another one. I do have them all in the same lot color because I figured it wasn't going to get done right away, and then I would run the risk of not having the same, and then there would just be like a huge line. Like, you know, you know, I can't be the only one that has done this, but the colors are just a little bit off because the dye lot is not the same. 100% polyester. This suggests an eight millimeter crochet hook. It's a super bulky number six. I'm using a nine millimeter Tunisian crochet hook for this and I'm doing the knit stitch in it, which is taking forever and a half. <laughs> it looks amazing, but it's just a very dense stitch. It's just not building up very quickly. And with all the other things that I've been doing, I just, I haven't really been focusing on it. I need to put this one in my planner and just spend some time to work on it. The yarn in and of itself, I like a lot. It says you can machine wash it and tumble dry low. I have done both of these. I mean, big twists I've come to know and love for that reason that you can put it in the wash and the dryer and it's gonna come out fine. I was a little worried about it because it's a very fluffy type of yarn, very good for stuffy making. I threw it in there, pulled it back out, totally fine. So I made a cover for a pillow a while ago with this exact yarn and that's how I know, like the blanket has not gone through the wash yet, but the cover of the pillow has gone through the wash and the dryer many times and it's still very fluffy. Here's the fangirl fiber in the dark academia. I knew I would find it somewhere. So this is the black, red, and gray combo kit. Finishing that up here today. 100% acrylic big twist value in 
hot pink. I made a bunch of beanies for Halloween. So I put this together with some black yarn. It's a number four medium weight yarn and it says you need one skein in order to make a beanie. Like they have the little things down here. I think I made six out of this. 380 yards. So it was hot pink on the outside, black on the inside. Not an anti-pilling yarn, but it says that it's machine wash. Do not tumble dry. Yes, it'll get pileated, but I still like it. And it has a place in the yarn dungeon. Every once in a while, I'll make little projects like that, like hats and mittens. I do love to have them as anti-pill yarn, but I don't know, it's just really soft. I like it. And the colors are spot on too. I love them. Hirschner's Worsted Halloween Sparkle Yarn. Yes, I still have a couple of these left. 92% acrylic, 8% polyester. Speaking of yarn that is not incredibly soft, but I love the color. So this yarn, it needs to have a little work. I, and especially since it's the sparkle, it has a metallic strand running through it. Again, it's, it's gonna hold up, but it needs to be softened somehow. So after I work it up, I normally add, just get a big bucket or put it in my bathtub, add a little shampoo conditioner to it, let it sit for about 20 minutes, and then it softens it up quite significantly. What I've been using this for, because this is the color candy corn, which they had an entire line of Halloween yarn last year. It is completely sold out. I don't know. There might be one or two colorways left on their site, but last time I looked, it was totally sold out. So anything that I have, I've been, okay, how bad do I want this worked up into a project? Because this is it. Like this is last. I have to wait until they come back on the site and who knows if they're gonna actually come back with it. It's always up in the air with Halloween yarn if we're gonna get it again. However, I have been finding these blankets at thrift stores and I cannot let them sit. So this one, the inside here, until we get to this little shimmery section, which is just a tiny little border, that is the only thing that I added onto it. And that is one full skein of this, which is, how many yards? 489 yards, just one of it. Like that shows you how big this is. When I found this blanket, there were a couple of spots that needed to be fixed and there were a bunch of ends on it too. I just, I couldn't let it sit there. So I have been collecting all of these blankets. Every time I go to a thrift store, I just take a little look and see if there's any crochet blankets there that need to be rescued and repaired. Found quite a few of them now. It's like a process. I've been, that's my morning project that I've been working on is fixing up all of these blankets. I decided to add the candy corn yarn to it because it just, it's perfect. You know, the colors screams candy corn blanket already. I think I'm going to make some candy corn appliques too, either to like hang on the edge or maybe do just in the corners. I don't know, I haven't really figured it out yet. Otherwise it's gonna be done. It will be ready to find a new home and given a new spooky little life. Eddie Bauer Fireside Plush. There's a couple of these. This was a 100% recycled polyester, which was a collaboration with Joanne Fabrics. I had just these three left. It's a jumbo number seven, so really, really big yarn, suggesting a 15 millimeter crochet hook. You can throw it in the wash, but don't put it in the dryer. It was a very soft and fluffy type of yarn. I wouldn't have wanted to put it in the dryer anyways. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just put it all together, and they're all three different colors. So we have gray, evergreen, and carbon made a tiny little rug. I put that in my kitchen, then my cats decided that they wanted it, so then I put it on their cat tower, and now it's their cozy little new blankie that they have. Honestly, there just wasn't enough to do much of anything. I was thinking maybe doing a pillow cover, but then I started working that up, and I didn't really like how the color transition work. If I would have had enough of just like one color, I think I would have done that. But this worked out perfect because it's super cozy. They love it. They look adorable. Like it was worth it. Arcane Fiberworks in the color Crimson Moon. This is our yarn of the month for February, which was another pattern that fell victim to me not finishing during February. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. I was going to make a cover for my book just like a nice little fold over with some buttons i even had little spider buttons 
to put on there. I don't know. I just didn't like it. It was all finished and everything. Didn't like it. Caked it up. And now it's sitting there staring at me waiting to be made into another project. Again, nothing wrong with the yarn. It's a worsted weight number four. 100% superwash merino wool. These are my colors. I love them so much. I think I'm just gonna make like a beanie or something on my knitting machine because it's just sitting here on my desk. Just make me into something. Like stop pulling me apart once it's been made into something. Just go with it. I do have Arkeem Fiberworks in carbon. So they have special colorways that come out all the time, like multiple colorways every single month, but then they do have neutral colors. So there is a carbon, maybe I have one. Oh yeah, right here, charcoal. Sorry, I thought it was carbon. Charcoal, I have a bunch of these for this exact reason. When I love a colorway, but I wanna make it into something that an accent color would be perfect for, this is my go-to for it. Cover Story Dreamland. This is from Lion Brands. And I don't really have a lot to say about this, good or bad. Honestly, it was fine. It's super bulky, number six. There's 300 grams in here, 148 yards in each cake. It's 100% polyester. You can throw it in the wash. And the dryer made a pillow cover. This is the only thing, oh, I need to, weave that in. The only thing that came to be out of all of the ideas that I had for Valoween this year, I like it. Like there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't know that I would ever reach for this again. I mean, it's a super bulky yarn. I don't normally go for that type of yarn anyways. I think I have two more of these, so I'm gonna use it, make some more pillow covers. I think that's the only thing I'll do. It would look really cool as a rug though. So basically home accessories, home decor, anything that you want a little bit of coziness added, yeah, definitely go for this. But if I didn't see it, I don't know that I would go out of my way to grab it just because there's a lot of other super bulky yarn that I have. I don't know why I'm so indifferent about this. Like I said, there wasn't anything wrong with it. It's a fun color. There were not a lot of colors to choose from though. I guess I'll say that. What was the name of this one? Black Cherry. Out of all the colors that they have, this was the only one that I was willing to use, I guess. There was a lot of bright colors, which Lion Brands is like that. You know, they have a lot of the neutral colors, then they have really, really bright colors, and then they have baby colors. Obviously, there's other things that they come out with, but when they drop a new line of something, that's normally the things that they go with. So the dark and moody colors, we don't see a lot of that. I should be happy that they have one of these. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not in the mood to use bulky yarn at the moment. That might be it. Karen Swirl Cakes, the Cinnamon Swirl Cakes. Again, from Yarn Inspirations, this is the No Wool Added. So we have 100% acrylic, the Cookie Cream Swirl, a medium number four, suggesting five millimeter crochet hook, machine washed and dryable. I know that I had a bunch of stuff made for this. I made beanies. I made mittens and I cannot find any of them. So here's what the yarn looked like. I have a couple of them left over. Very much enjoyed this yarn. It was incredibly fun to work up. They have a pattern here ready to go. I might actually do this. I don't know, I've been feeling the shrugs lately, the shawls, the wraps. They've been a really fun project to work up. When I don't wanna do a blanket or commit to an brand new entire big blanket project, the shawls and the wraps, I've been doing those lately. So three balls in order to have this. I have four of these left. Yeah, so I could totally do that. Crochet ruffled shawl. They have so many other patterns. So it's your inspiration. They have a ton of patterns for anything and everything. This is part of their spring lineup or like the intro to spring. So we get like they split spring in half and they have a really early drop and then they have a little later drop and then summer. Then our favorite, which is all of the autumn and fall and Halloween drops. Actually, I don't know. Do, have they ever done an entire Halloween drop for Yarn Inspiration? I know they had a like a witch's brew for the macchiato last year. Was that actually Halloween or I don't know. If that's not a thing, it should definitely be a thing. So we're gonna put that into the universe. Eight ounces, 407 yards. Yeah, it worked amazing on the knitting machine. 
Il Yarn Glow in the Dark Yarn Charge with Light. This is a five millimeter crochet hook, so a medium number four weight yarn. I really, really enjoy this yarn for glow in the dark stuff. I've been making tiny little skeletons, adding them onto keychains and putting them on everything. My bags, my totes, my jean jackets, like anything that I can clip a keychain on, it's been covered. Big Twist Fleck. Medium number four yarn. I worked up a sweater. Oh, I did it for Halloween too. I did get more projects than I thought I was going to. Okay, so I finished an entire sweater on the knitting machine with this. Strawberry Smoothie and Black Sesame. So these two colors I put on the knitting machine, did a split colorway sweater. The knitting machine, absolutely loved this yarn. If you're looking for something, well, okay, this can't really be a staple because this is something that only comes out this time of year. But if you want to stock up, which is something that I did, especially with the black sesame, because I wanted to make some more beanies, some hats, some leg warmers with it. Machine washable, don't put it in the dryer. So... I guess it's up in the air if you want it to be a staple or not, but I liked it and I love how the speckles come out, like tweed yarn, I'm a big fan of that. Four millimeter crochet hook if you wanna crochet it up, which I should do that. I have a lot of the black, but a little bit of the hot pink. I see the sweater, so let's just grab it. Why not? You see what I'm saying? The tweed, it's amazing. Another sweater that is very warm. This is definitely something that it's a wintertime sweater, even with it being cropped. Today's not the day. It's just very sunny out. I think that's it. I should stop saying that it's not going to be usable because there's always a couple other blizzards or a couple very, very cold days that we have here in March. So I'm not going to put this away yet. The tweed all throughout it. This is what drew me in about this yarn and it's big twist. Love that they're adding more lines to it. They had a bunch of colors that I wanna go back and get. I did go back and get the pumpkin spice one. That with the black sesame, I'm gonna put together and have that ready for October. Do a little pumpkin picking action, some beanies. Just wanna have the options available because this is, I'm gonna say it's their part of their spring lineup. 85% acrylic, 5% linen, 10% poly made. I had only seen it a couple times of year. Like I saw it previous, like last year, passed up on it. This year I got it right when it came out. So I was able to pick the colors that I want. They have a really beautiful cranberry color too. I was on the fence when I went back and got the pumpkin spice one. I think I should just go back and get that one too because it's gonna come September, October and I'm really gonna want that and it's not gonna be there. So I should grab just a couple of them anyways to have on hand. Basic stitch, anti-killing yarn, black and white. Okay, this is some stuff that is a staple. It is always in the yarn dungeon. I have specifically this black and white. Then there's also just a plain black, a plain white, a pumpkin color. I have been adding crochet to my entire wardrobe. So like what I'm wearing today, this is actually Big Twist. Thrifted this Goosebump shirt, cropped it up a little bit and used my rotary, my perforated rotary cutter, went all around, made some little holes in it, crocheted into it using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. This is just a medium number four weight yarn, which is what the, wherever, I just threw that, the basic stitch anti-pilling is. The reason I use this more often than the Big Twist Value is because it's anti-pilling. I can throw this in the wash and the dryer and I know it's gonna come out exactly the way that I put it in there. This I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful with, but the color was just spot on. There was no even thinking about it. There is no neon intensity in the anti-pill line. They do have a wide variety of colors and I am happy that they have the black and white. Do I have an example of it here? No, I don't. I just got obsessed with adding the slime green to everything and anything we have there oh here is the line brand classic friday the 13th tea this is the anti-pill mesh stitch on the edging which makes it go really really quickly just did three rows and it's incredibly soft 
if I'm adding it to tees that I'm finding thrifting, I want them to be just as soft as the t-shirt. The basic stitch anti-pill is that. It's incredibly soft. And again, it's gonna hold up really well. So we have these two. Oh, this is a brand new make, like just a few days ago. Killer thrift find. It's a Vampire Freaks tee. I added the You'll Float 2 from Arcane Fiberworks to it. This one is just a half double crochet all around it. I wanted to be able to see the colorway and the color change in it a little bit better and it's kind of hard to see that if I did the mess stitch, which I mean this works really well with just like a solid colorway. Still ended up doing three rows. But yeah, this Alice in Wonderland tee, definitely my favorite thrift of last week anyways. It also works really, really well on the knitting machine. It doesn't get caught or snagged. And again, you can throw it the wash and the dryer. So great one to have in hand. Two more of the Bernate felted. Some more glow in the dark. We are almost to the end. Muse 2320. And that is in the color Nevermore. Yeah, I have a lot of that. Line brand DIY Glow. This is what I was starting to make some of my Skelly keychains out of, but I only had this one left. They do have this out now. It's not like a limited edition or a limited time, which they used to be like that. It would come out in the middle of July and then we wouldn't see it in October, but now I'm starting it to see it a little bit more in Joanne Fabrics. There's a nice little end cap and it seems to be permanent. I don't know, it's still here in March. It's a medium number four, five millimeter crochet hook in the color natural. They do have other colors. The natural, which is the, it's like a cream white type of color. I stocked up on that last year and this was the only one that I had left. But then, yeah, the, the hill yarns. I decided I like that a little bit better. Just because of the glow intensity, I like this one a little better. And they have a slime green color when that too. Like there's nothing wrong with the Lion Brands. I will definitely get more of this. I just prefer the Hill Yarns. Machine wash and dryable. You can throw it in the wash and the dryer. I don't know that I've actually put mine in the wash and dryer. Yes, no I have. I have made a mask out of it for a Halloween accessory, and yes, I've thrown it in the wash and dryer. So maybe it's my bad. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown it in the wash and the dryer. I should do a test trial between these two. Since this one is saying don't put it in the wash and the dryer, and this one is saying, yeah, go ahead and do it. Maybe if I didn't put it in the wash and the dryer, it would continue to glow a little bit more. We'll try that someday. Crimson Moon, Arcane Fiberworks, one more Fangirl Fibers in Amityville. Okay, so the one that I showed you all the way, this one that I am gonna leave as a wrap, I did get it in a DK weight version. That is still caked up. I started to do a beanie with it during December as like my travel beanie. I used, it was a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, single crochet, back loop only. I did not enjoy that project. It was not fun at all. It was taking so long to make this beanie and I just, in the back of my head, knew that I could throw it on my knitting machine and I would have been done like in under 30 minutes. Take that all up. I am gonna make it into a beanie though, especially now that I'm leaving this as a wrap or like a cowl. I need the matching beanie to go with it. One more left, Premier Home Cotton. I am gradually starting to get stuff to redo my kitchen or like restock up on my staples. Springtime and autumn, I really like to just kind of redo it, like assess, what do I need? Do I need more tea towels? Now that I have my Cricut, I'm gonna be designing some of my own tea towels instead of finding them at home goods and stuff like that. And the little scrubbies and dish towels, I like to crochet them. They have a lot of examples here and they also have many, many, free patterns on Pinterest, on their actual site, like all over the place that you can use. I don't like the big chunky ones just because they get super heavy. So I throw this on the knitting machine and I'll do anywhere from 20 to 35 rows, just make it a circle. Sometimes I'll do a square if I'm in the mood to, you know, go back and forth, lay it flat and then work that way. But if I wanna be just super quick, just throw it, make a little circle, close off the ends, and that's it. These are my favorite for little scrubbies. Medium number four weight, 5.5 millimeters. It's cotton. You can throw it in the wash, throw it in the dryer. 
they hold up for a very long time and I always make extra this time of year to have as gifts too. We have made it to the end. That is it. December, January, February, all of the yarn that I went through. Was there any that I didn't really like? This one was the only one that I was indifferent about. All the rest of them, I either liked it or had a use for them, which is pretty good. Three months of trying new yarn and retesting out some of my staples. I'd say that's a pretty good win. If you are still here with me, thank you so much for hanging out with me and chatting about all of this yarn. I could go on for hours and hours about all of this. I mean, I did go on for quite a while, but I could go even longer. I just need to refill my coffee and my water. So I genuinely appreciate it. If you love chatting yarn, let me know too. Pumpkin emojis in the comments so we can have more yarn chats like this. Until then, have a fantastically spooky rest of your day and I will see you in my next video.